Wow. So uh, I've just seen the uh, Channel 4 uh, hit piece on uh, Andrew Tate, and uh, it, it doesn't really cease to amaze me. It's interesting. Uh, there is no respect for anything in regards to the present of for legal process. Um, you know, that someone is innocent until proven guilty. Um, everything is, it seems to be accusation, insinuation. Um, yeah, at the end of the whole program, I think it went on for about an hour and a half. It confirmed that the police followed the uh, allegations of one of the women who was anonymous uh, and decided that there was no case to answer for. And it, it didn't even get to trial. It didn't even get to trial. Um, Andrew Tate. I, I find him an interesting character. Uh, some of the things what he said and has said are like, are just are stupid. Um, but uh, most of them are, as you said, sort of tongue in cheek. Yeah? They mostly said tongue in cheek. And they're not to be taken seriously. Um, it's, it's very concerning the vigour in which the establishment seeks to silence this chap and his brother. That is my main focus, not so much from what is being said, but how they've gone out of their way to silence. So obviously you've got like you know, YouTube's banning him. He was bit banned on Twitter, but reinstated when Elon Musk took over a Twitter to call the X. Um, it, it, there's been, uh, the BBC tried to do a hit piece on him and it was absolutely disastrous. Piers Morgan, uh, took him to task and uh, embarrassed himself and uh, it was interesting with the BBC what they ended up doing was having to you know, switch off their comment section because the comments were just so in favour of uh, Andrew Tate and, and how it was conducted Andrew Tate at that time took a leaf out of um, what's his name Tommy Robertson's book and recorded uh, the interview separately so it could, you know, so something which was like a like a, an hour or forty minutes got edited down to something like twenty five minutes with the BBC, and uh, he showed the full full length. Now the uh, the Channel Four uh, uh, sort of documentary, it was just going over a lot of old ground really, uh, and just really trying to edit and create this sort of piece. Um, uh, it's, it's just disturbing. Uh, I can understand perhaps why Tate Brothers didn't participate in the uh, documentary because they wouldn't have had no editorial control. Because no matter what they would have said, uh, it would have been spun in a different way to which they thought they'd, you know, they'd go, go, go on to it. And it, it, we're, we're, we're in a situation now where it's not, it's not good enough to go to, into a court to clear your name, even. Uh, you know, they're really trying to mask or paint a picture of somebody um, which uh, just goes against the, the, the narrative, if you like. As I said, you know, Andrew Tate, a lot, a lot of things what he says, some of it's stupid. Uh, but... Uh, at the same time, a lot of things, some, a lot of things what he says are very positive, very, very positive. And uh, it, it was the um, it was Lucy Williamson, fun enough, who uh, made it known inadvertently that uh, Andrew Tate donated some like over sort of like ten million or twenty million pounds to refugees. And that was something which was really silent. She suggested that he donated that amount of money uh, to try and curry favour uh, in his name. I mean, in all honesty, there are a lot of people uh, and a lot bigger figures who do not donate anywhere near that amount of money. And that was uh, something which was done uh, privately, to be honest. It wasn't that greatly well publicised until that Lucy Williamson brought it up uh, for the BBC. Um, so yeah, it's, it's interesting. I, I don't think that the um, Channel Four. Yeah, it makes me wonder what is going on over there uh, in uh, 
uh, Romania that uh, Channel 4 wants to get this sort of uh, documentary out there. Probably it's to create some type of warning to the systems uh, to make him a person non gratia if he comes back to the UK, perhaps. Uh, maybe that, that's, that's the... Uh, that, that, that is the modus operandi in which they're operating. So if he comes back, he'll be closely monitored, and uh, you know he will be alien to to, to the state, yeah, um, as they've done to uh, Tommy Robinson. You know we are living in very fearful times, quite frankly. And over the years, I, I've watched this country turn into East Germany. I mean, there's a standing joke where. Uh, apparently in Germany saying if you want to know what it was like to live in East Germany just have a look at Britain as it is today and, and it, it's, it's quite true the way I look at things now um, the way in which this country has gone it, it's, it's quite scary and what is more scary is those who are complicit in following this sort of uh, line so the, the idea of uh, ignoring the judicial system the idea of creating persons of non gratia if they go against the narrative um especially if you are from a working class background there's an absolute hatred uh, for the, the working class uh, i think what we have at this moment in time is a situation in regards to the uh, social media just how powerful it, it is and it's a bit like a genie which has come out of the bottle and the authorities are really trying to choke it uh, you've got this fragmentation of mass media such as the newspapers got declining circulations uh, television is getting fragment fragmented I mean I'm an old guy I remember when Morgan and Wise was first aired and you know they would get something like 10 15 million views yeah uh, around Christmas time when, it, when Morgan and Wise sort of came out. Now, if you get sort of uh, six million views, that is considerable, yeah, uh, in terms of uh, publishing and broadcasting uh, viewings, yeah. So you've got that fragmented uh, mainstream media and they're competing with online influencers who have got sort of a, a fan base of about, you know, maybe two, four, uh, million uh, subscribers as a base uh, when I was uh, doing art there was a chap who had something like a quarter of a million uh, followers which is pretty good for an artist uh, but what was very interesting about it was that you could I mean okay the, the way to explain it is uh, I think it was Henry Ford said but I know that half of my advertising is wasted. I just don't know which half is being wasted. Well, that old saying is now completely and utterly redundant with the social media and the analytics which we've got, because you can track so much and so precisely the followers and target the followers, okay? But it becomes a weapon uh, to for people who are media savvy uh, with this new uh, that's all social media, who can build up a strong fan base and a strong following, which is outside of the narrative, which is being completely rammed down the throat of the mass of the population. Yeah, and it is a counter threat, a counterbalance to this type of uh, narrative. And I think the establishment wants to try and choke any uh, counter narrative to what it is they're doing uh, and they need to and the only way they can do that is by threatening potential advertising revenues of uh, these uh, platforms social media platforms if they don't comply with uh, isolating certain individuals which the establishment don't agree with okay I'm not a great believer in uh, conspiracy theories as such but there is a logical derivative as to what is going on um, you, you may have seen that film uh, it's a German film, brilliant film called The Lives of Others I highly recommend that you, you, you see this film 
it's where the uh, Stasi in East Germany decide that they're going to uh, sort of uh, investigate an eardrop on some uh, uh, theatre director. And so literally, old school, they've gone up into the attic, they've wired up the guy's apartment, and they're just spying on him on a daily basis. Now, we don't need to do that anymore because we've got this, we've got a phone. And that phone, you know, has got a, you know, a microphone which can be tampered into. It lets you know when you're awake, when you're asleep, what you're looking at, who you're calling, who your contacts are. Okay, this is this is this is the spy. What, what we have in, in 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 our lives to monitor. Uh, what am I saying? How does this relate to uh, Andrew Tate? Well, I just think it just relates in regards to silencing individuals which may pose a problem in this modern day. I mean, when I was growing up, the bogeyman of the time of was Arthur Scargill. Yeah, Arthur Scargill was the bogeyman, okay? Uh, and, you know, look what happened to him. The guy's silent, he's still alive, <laughs> you know? But the way in which the state operated against him, okay, uh, that was old school. New school is what we're seeing now against the likes of uh, Andrew Tate or Russell Brand, for example, obviously Tommy, Tommy Robinson and uh, et al, if you like. Uh, we've got to be aware. We've, I don't know. We've really got to be critical in what is being presented to us. That's it. That's what I want to say at this moment in time. I'm not going to go any deeper into it. It's just first-hand observations, really, of that particular uh, hit job by the Channel 4. Uh, 